I built industry coaches for the most part up in Canada, but they built a special car carrier that had a great deal of success. However, like we said, in 1987, after thoroughly sacking, pillaging, and raping the company, the mother was killed for all practical purposes. The Dial Corporation took over. It was a very sad day. The company was in such disarray. It was sold to Curry, but that's another tape, of course. That's an altogether another tape. Now, it's, it's just sad what she went to. And then, of course, Curry lost it to Schmieder. I mean, the things that have been done over the last few years to the traveling public by Greyhound is unbelievable. Now, if these were airlines that were doing this, and uh, the senators in Washington would be on them big time. But this is just the, the regular working traveling public. People began to lose faith in Greyhound. They couldn't finish their trip in some instances. They had to wait 12, 14, 18 hours for another bus in many instances. There were people driving these buses that couldn't get a job in the wash rack in the old Greyhound. It was incredible. It was just unbelievable. Greyhound Canada, though, uh -uh. see, Teats couldn't get his hands in, in there and destroy it because the Canadian government had rules and regulations in effect and uh, they, he just couldn't get in there. How's this? Greyhound Package Express is so big up in Canada they run their own freight liners. Well, like I said, After Dial is another whole video, another whole series. What we'll do now is we'll bop along and give you a little slideshow of some memories gone by and things that used to be. This is a really a bitter, bitter sweet. I'm awfully sorry, I'm very sorry that I lived to see this. Like I say, Canada though, no? Canada, as a matter of fact, Greyhound Canada will have nothing to do with Greyhound in the United States, nothing whatsoever. They won't connect with them uh, uh, in, 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 in the border or anything. They connect with trailway carriers. So that's, but Mr. Lynch is back in charge now. Maybe, he's a busman, maybe good things will happen. Remember, I was just, well, let's let the sad times go and let's get back to the happy times. Boy, this was a cold day in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now notice, this is, this is one of the early eights. Uh, See the uh, silver cap up there, which they later painted blue? That's how you can tell. Here's, here's a silver cap moving at speed. Uh, I caught her in the mass pike. She was bopping right along. Silver cap MC7 at Houston. Boy, what a pitiful station that was. They had a vampire bank there, you know, a place you could sell your blood, a liquor store, and a porno house all on one side. And uh, that's one of the few places outside of Detroit and Philly that uh, I had near misses, uh, near muggins, and I had to take off. They had the whole lineup out there waiting to get into the blood bank, and they were sizing me up with the cameras. Hey, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, even the fish bowls out in California were Pepsiized. That neat or what? Of course, shortly after this, uh, Alameda Costa County would be created by Umter and the Suburban Greyhound Division. Uh, whoops, a little bit ahead of myself here. This is some of the stuff I did for the Curry regime. This is the, the old Dallas station there. Well, I created some, you know, if I do say so myself, some nice pictures. Silver Cap 7. Of course, as you know, I was also the Eagle photographer when they got that. I worked too cheap. I was 
told by certain people that if I raised my prices and kicked back some money, I could get a $1,500 day rate rather than my industry standard of $275. I told them that I have too much integrity and honor in, uh, in this industry, and I just am not a crook, sorry. Consequently, I lost the Greyhound and the Eagle account. Oh, this is the old days when you could park it down by the Capitol. You can't do that no more, no more. Oh, here's, here's one of the little dolls. The last GM that Greyhound would ever buy. This is how they were delivered new. Got this in Chicago. You could, uh, they were very heavy on the Chicago, Memphis, St. Louis run. Oh, yeah, this is a nice day in Long Beach. This guy snuck up on me. I was coming back from looking at the, at the beach. On his way down to San Diego, the local. Okay, trying to get on Walker Boulevard in Chicago. Not only is that terminal history, so <laughs> obviously so is this car. As you can see, the 4107s, these are GMPD 4107s for the youngins who don't know, were Pepsiized. The old Washington garage, silver capped MC7. Old Big Bear was quite a bus, boy. The drivers loved her. She was balanced beautifully. Uh, hell of a road machine. 3423, when she was still a Super 7. See, the, to the right of the screen is a, an underground subway that they exited uh, the Randolph Street uh, Greyhound Terminal in Chicago. Again, that's the car, you, these slides should have, one should have been in front of the other. That's the same car you saw the back of. Not all of them were Pepsi eyes. Uh, I, I saw quite a few of them that uh, were ground down to the bare white when they, they finally decided to sell them all off. They did operate well into the 70s. Washington National Cemetery, Arlington National Cemetery, I'm sorry. Mighty MC9. As we said, the MC9 unseated the sales record of the 4104. Well over 5,000 units made. There's a, there's a rare destination sign on Big Bear here. Cape Cod. Now there's something that uh, you see very common today is filthy wheels. So that wheel back there must have been changed out. Oh Lord, who hasn't taken this picture, including me, shown here. She was sneaking up the drive. Actually, I was in town to do a whole bunch of stuff for Eagle, a bunch of sales pictures for Eagle. Capital Trailways Yard. Capital Trailways uh, used to service Greyhound in Harrisburg, and I think they're back doing it again now. When she was a Super 7 Scenic Cruiser, Silver Cap, before the Cruiser name was invented. MC5A. Gotta go get some iced tea here. Oh, Bob Greenhill's fine outfit. TNM and O coaches. Now there's a busman. Bob Greenhill is one of the most respected. He's a, he's a pres of TNM and O. I was. Sorry to see TNM and all uh, knock out New Mexico transportation, but uh, that was an acceptable thing as far as I was concerned, being a bus nut. Now you gotta remember, I talk industry and I talk bus nut too. But this is in Lubbock, Texas, where the, the home base is for TNM and all coaches. Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma coaches. Now uh, here's, here's the commuter cars. This is in LA. Thing had a cash box in it. Naturally, uh, it had eight cylinders in it. Now, the, the only people that kept V12s were the Canadians and their MC6s. 
coming out of Wacker. See the top of the screen? That's the drive there, that the uh, subway drive. It was a great place to take bus pictures. Boy, you could get nice aerials, get up. There's an overpass there. And they went underneath onto Wacker and, and went wherever they were going. Had a lot of, a lot of nice stuff there. Oh, here's Cary Transportation. There's an oldie but a goodie. Of course, that's how the Big Bear was delivered brand new. Except in the case of Greyhound, it would say Greyhound on it. But it still had, you know, uh, take the bus and leave the driving to us, that kind of thing down on the, on the lower level. Oh, just, just a few feet from here, a few years back, is where that HC-130 uh, flew into the lobby of the hotel. This is Indianapolis Airport. There she is, brand spanking new, brand spanking new. I mean, I want to tell you, the first time I laid eyes on that, I just fell instantly in love. All she was was this car here with another five feet added. This is the MC5A, uh, and and it was it was added. Five feet, Canada. Yep. Kenora, Wisconsin, Kenora, Ontario, Kenora, Wisconsin. Oh God, the Prozac's wearing off. Uh, there's still uh, Super 8 scenic cruisers or whatever. There's still scenic cruisers in Canada. They never gave up that name. They didn't want to call themselves Canada cruisers and they didn't, obviously didn't want to call themselves Cruises. So scenic cruisers still is alive and well up there. This is a, a really interesting picture. I had stopped to read a road sign. It was Redden, Delaware, R-E-D-D-E-N, exactly like, like my name is. And uh, I looked over my shoulder and she's definitely a charter car. There's, she, was, she had no business being this far back in Delaware in the woods. I don't know where she was going. Showing a little of her age on the side there, wrinkling up a little bit, getting some stress. MC7 had some horrendous corrosion problems behind uh, that front panel. St. Stephen, New Brunswick is only about 500 yards to the right of the picture and this is the port of entry at Callis, Maine. The bus rolls over a little tiny bridge and then stops at the border inspection station. Man, this guy was, a, I was staying in Callis that night. And this, this car must have had some sort of an idiot on board who gave the customs boys a wisecrack or something. You don't ever, you don't ever wisecrack customs agents. They're born ugly. That's how they got the job. And that car that was sitting there two hours later. Oh boy, I'll bet they were pretty upset because that's a local uh, that runs down uh, through uh, Rockland and, and uh, along the coast, Belfast. Super 7 Scenic Cruiser, Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I want to tell you, she was getting a little long in the tooth here, even though she's a silver capped. Canadian Greyhound, they, uh, well, they, they still have money, so they take, they take excellent care of their equipment. They really do. It's still a Greyhound operating company, as we remember Greyhound. There's one when she weren't too old. Uh, here's, here's a weird little service. Completely independent of Greyhound, it was created in Washington, D.C. It was called Greyhound Airport Service. Uh, it had a bunch of minimal wage drivers in it. and uh, All it did was shuttle back and forth between Washington National and the hotels downtown. But, of course, Umpta put an end to that. You can't make it out. She had the Concorde flying belly up in the front and the Greyhound dog on the back. Because it's too much glare. This was inside the... The Washington, the old Washington garage. 
Another piece of history, Portland, Oregon, the drive through garage that Pacific used to have up that way. MC5s weren't too old when I shot that. Again, a little bit out of context. Here's, here's the back of that uh, border shot. See the Gulf sign over there? They all went BP. Well, in New England they didn't. There's still Gulf up that way. Oh, of course, this picture here is my graces. 15 years old or more, somewhere around there. In Louisville, getting ready to be ground down to basic white. She was being sold off. They would not let the 4107s go with the Pepsi paint scheme on them. You had to buy them all white. They were not going to let those cars go. Here again, this is Chicago. Some of them uh, made it right to the end without ever getting Pepsiized. They never did buy the 4905, the 40 foot hump. The only one they ever bought was, was this here, the, the 4107, 35 footer. Montreal, up on charter for the ABA, American Bus Association. I was up there doing a bunch of pictures. Oh, here's an oldie but a goodie. They had a little tiny garage in Bangor, Maine, and uh, these two girls are going down to the station. Bangor at certain times of the year can be a very productive, uh, very productive place. Now here's the, this was a, a recent cover of National Bus Trader. This is the American Bus Association before Greyhound pulled out of it. Because back in these days, you used to see Greyhounds on Met, uh, Metro, a Bus Ride, a National Bus Trader, bus tours, destinations, because I was taking the pictures. Well, hope you liked it. Y'all take care now. There's a lot more videos on Greyhound, Trailways, and whatnot here. Bye now.